now, please welcome Skip Senior Hospitality Editor, Sean O'Neill. Thank you, thank you. So travel will be more blended in 2023. Uh, blended is the watchword that we're going to use to unify the next few mega trends that we're going to be talking about. Uh, we're going to have on the screen here a handful of mega trends uh, that you can see. So in the pandemic, a lot of things about our business got uh, scrambled. Uh, and one of them is that we had to sort of have a lot more cross pollination between different segments. So for example, if you were a hotelier uh, and you might have uh, been used to having your guests come to your front desk in order to check in, and now you are adopting from the short term rental segment, uh, contactless tech as a way for coming in. Meanwhile, the short term rental segment might be adopting uh, some of the revenue management software to manage prices to be able to handle the surge in demand that they had. So there was a lot of blending of learning business models from different things. And we are forecasting that in 2023, that is going to continue through. Uh, and one reason is because of the rise of uh, blended travel. One of our mega trends is that blended travel comes of age. Now, many of you in this room, my colleague Dennis Shaw, who's a uh, founding executive editor of our, our company, was saying, you know, for the past 10 years, we've been talking about pleasure trips, a combination of business and leisure trips. But what is new is it has become more significant, and executives are actually talking about it on earnings calls uh, as part of their actual strategy about how they choose what product and development and customer uh, product and service innovation. So we have a chart here, uh, last year, 2022, Skift Research tapped the data of trip actions, the corporate uh, travel powerhouse, and looked at the data and saw that in 2019, 31% of business trips included a weekend component, which you can see as a kind of a leisure, uh, uh, signal of leisure. Now it is 20, it's 38%, so it's a 7% point gain. So it's become more significant as one data point. We, in the megatrend, uh, my colleagues sort of cover all the different executives, whether it's the American Airlines CEO or the Marriott International CEO, talking about how they're actually changing and doing business plans to target this. And you need to make sure that you are targeting uh, that you're having your data that you're collecting both internally and externally is giving you a blended picture of the blended traveler because the problem is during their stay, they're changing. So at one point, they're in a business mindset and they're going to be susceptible to a certain set of upsells and ancillaries. Then they're going to shift into more of a leisure mode. But you have to sort of figure out how do you adjust your app, your marketing as you go along. Next mega trend we're going to touch on is that hotels are making emotion the new brand standard. So what does this mean? So brand standards are what hotels have used for many years to try to make the physical experience of the property consistent. So they work with their franchisees and uh, their other hotel partners to make sure that the bed linens are going to have a particular thread count, uh, that the customer uniforms are going to be consistent. Um, what is now happening as we come out of the pandemic is hotels are looking for a more consistent emotional experience. Um, so there's been several brands that we see that have been emerging, uh, Sonder and Selena, Bode and Drift, um, Room 2 in the UK, 25 Hours in Europe, um, uh, that have been working bunkhouse and standard. So the physical, the physical elements that you see in your space may not be the same as you go from property to property, uh, but they are trying to create a consistent emotional reaction. So why does that matter and why is that happening more now? So if there's one slide in this 10 minute presentation that I think that is worthwhile for you, even if you're not in the hotel or lodging sector, it is this next slide. Uh, it is about, we're all getting lonelier. Now this data is US data and I know we have a global audience. I can assure you that in Europe and in Japan and Australia, we have similar data, but we're just simplifying it here. So in the United States in 2013, uh, the average American spent 6.5 hours a week with their friends. That number has consistently come down, and by 2019, it was only about four hours. Now, we're spending on average only about two hours and 45 minutes per week with our friends. So if people are, this, this is a proxy for loneliness, so to speak, and it is an opportunity for anyone who delivers hospitality, not just in the hotel and short-term rental sector, if you want to 
sort of create a sense of inclusion in an environment, some sort of, sort of create an emotional connection, it is going to resonate a lot more now than it might have a decade ago. So it's a real opportunity. Our next the mega trend that we'll uh, talk about is that greater price transparency in short-term rentals will catch fire. So my colleague, uh, uh, executive editor Dennis Shaw, has been covering Airbnb, and he wrote this mega trend. And in, as many of you know, in the past couple of months, Airbnb has added a little button on the app, and you toggle it, and you can now see the total price for your short-term rental or your vacation um, home. And why, why did they make this switch? Well, there was, there was an emotional issue here. As my colleague Seth Borko uh, was pointing out to me, um, many consumers had an emotional connection with Airbnb as a brand, really sort of resonated this. He talked about earlier in his presentation that the rise of millennials as this, uh, the biggest uh, proportionally generation that's buying travel now, you, they, many of them are looking for unique experiences and they really resonated with the product that the Airbnb was having, including its new OM, OMG product. So what was this, this trust was being put at risk when they started getting this nickel and diming bait and switch experience that they go on to book something and it looks like it's only gonna be $200 a night. And then it turns out it's like $400 after you add the housekeeping fees and other fees. So in order to keep that emotional connection going, Airbnb has switched um, its model. And it is important because as the largest online travel agency in the sector that's very popular with millennials, it's the emerging generation, it, Airbnb is setting a customer expectation um, and customers are gonna bring that over. So in our blended era, you have to sort of recognize that that's what Airbnb is doing. Even if you're not in short-term rentals, you need to sort of inc have price transparency as well. Next mega trend that I would like to talk about is that event planners are embracing transformational experience first events in order to win back reluctant travelers. So at Skift, we have a, um, a sister brand at Skift Meetings. It's uh, not paywalled. It has a lot of great news you can use about how to run great events. What you see there in the background is an example of this Snoop Dogg. You don't have to have Snoop Dogg at your event to have it be successful. You just have to read the megatrend that, uh, but with this, this company, C2, it's uh, offshoot of Cirque du Soleil. Many of you know about it. They create an event in Montreal every year that is really dramatic. It has a blended approach, inter interdisciplinary approach of taking a lot of techniques about how do you present content? How do you create networking moments? And get, making people feel an emotional connection. Um, one of the crazier things is they, you know, I think everyone's been at a theme park where you're on sort of like the, the, uh, the they briefly just showed it there. There's like the uh, spinning, um, uh, spinning seats and they had the seats go rise up into the air and then you're sort of hanging around talking to each other. Um, you don't have to have all that. The, the, as my colleagues, Miguel and Andrea pointed out, you, what you need to do is make content first. You need to also have networking breaks and moments where you can sort of connect uh, with each other and have those moments to go back to the office when you are doing your uh, pleasure travel. Move on to our next mega trend. So tour operators are embracing the long elusive software solution. So what is this about? So if you look at all of the travel segments, uh, Skift would say that tour operators and tour and activity providers are the two segments that are laggards, they're behind the game of everyone else when it comes to adopting all of your back-end technology. So about half of tours and activities uh, operators are still doing, and maybe they're on Excel, but they aren't taking advantage of the latest revenue management systems. They aren't taking advantage of distribution software, marketing tools, and uh, they don't have a great, gown, great ground game. And that matters because what they're selling is it has a real opportunity in the, in the emotional component that I was discussing before. So I think we all know, as my colleague Seth was pointing out to me, we all know someone who's in their late 20s, early 30s, might be a prime candidate for that loneliness that we were talking about before. And they go on one of these tours. Maybe it's intrepid travel. Maybe it's going to Peru to uh, hike you know, and see the Inca Trail. And you are in a group where you're making these flash friends with people from all over the world. And it might be the first real close friends that you've made in a couple of years. And so this is a real emotional touch point opportunity. But 
these companies, are, they don't have the great digital game to contact as well as they can. A lot of the demand is coming into them. They could do much better about reaching out and being proactive here. And so we're going to hear later today, going to be interviewing on stage the CEO of Get Your Guide. Uh, it uh, has a billion dollar valuation, and they are leading players, uh, online travel agency in the tourism activity space. He's going to have some commentary here. But Intrepid Travel is just one example. They are uh, going to spend more than a million dollars on technology this year. Uh, that's a lot for a company of its size. It's about 180% more than they were spending in 2019. So we see that there is a real opportunity that experiences that haven't really been added on, companies like Expedia, companies like Google, that haven't really been adding on as an attachment tours and activities and tour operator experiences, this is going to have a sudden, not quite exponential, but it's going to be a logarithmic growth. So what are some of our takeaways? I think one of the takeaways is that the great merging in our customer lives is prompting leaders uh, to think outside their silos. You know, they're going to use customers' emotions as a lens for product and service innovation. Uh, one of uh, the, you know, the founding editorial team at Skift was very big that what the industry needed when it comes to uh, both travel editorial and research was using the customer and their, their behavior and their changes in, in, in patterns of interest as the lens in which to view all the other changes that are happening in the travel industry. And so we're recommending that in this time uh, of blended travel rising, that you might have more blendedness in your business models. Um, so I think what we're going to do now is we're going to bring on two experts who are, uh, have spent the past couple of decades really immersed at both the high strategy level uh, and in the details of hotel design, innovation, and branding. And they're going to talk about how hotels are responding to some of the megatrends that we just discussed. So please stay with us.